Forgotten to history is one of the biggest what ifs in NFL history, that being Billy Sims. He was known all around as a dominant force and one not to be reckoned with. Unfortunately for him and for us as well, his NFL career would be short lived. Thus, he's forgotten. Let's talk about why he shouldn't be. Billy Ray Sims was born on September 18th of 1955 in the big city of St. Louis in Missouri. Originally obsessed with baseball in his early years, this would all change once he moved to Texas in 8th grade and he became so entwined with football. He would take no time to show the true potential of an NFL All-Star, becoming arguably the most electric player in the country. He played just three years of high school football and yet we can still all recognize him as one of the greatest if not the greatest high school football player ever. Once he came onto the field it was just it was over for the opposing team. He held many state records by the time he would go to college, two of those being rush attempts with 1,128 carries and the other being 7,738 rushing yards. He did all this in just three years guys. That's absolutely wild. Unfortunately, I can't find out how many colleges or who actually really recruited Sims, so unfortunately that knowledge won't be obtainable in this video. The knowledge that I can share with you guys though is that he did go to Oklahoma in college. He became a Sooner and he was the original Oklahoma Sooner running back, followed obviously by the likes of Adrian Peterson in the future. By the time he would leave, he had left his mark in Sooner's history, but it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows for him. As in his first three seasons, he would only have 89 rush attempts, 552 rushing yards, and six touchdowns. Injuries would pop up in his career for the first time, which would foreshadow the Drury end. In his fourth season in Oklahoma, he would finally stay healthy and show everyone the type of talent he has and why he was the best player in the country. Rushing for 231 attempts, 1,762 yards, and 20 touchdowns, which is just crazy. But that's not all. He would play another season as well, and in 1979, he would have a productive season just like his last rushing 224 times for 1,506 yards and 22 touchdowns. Being the first overall pick in pretty much any draft, let alone the NFL draft, is always a tough choice. It's especially even harder in the NFL if you are not a quarterback because there's just even more hype and stuff that you have to live up to. Back in 1980, when he was first drafted, it made a lot more sense for NFL teams to have a good running game versus the passing, because at the time, the passing era wasn't really, it hadn't taken off yet. Anyways, the Detroit Lions would gamble on Sims, and it definitely worked out for them. Or did it? You decide. In the comments below, let me know if you think the Lions won or lost this pick, and he was drafted first overall. In his rookie season, he would just shut any doubters up rushing for astronomical numbers i i mean well over 1300 yards and well over 10 touchdowns it was crazy he was just impeccable if you want me to get those stats exactly right here we go he ran for 313 attempts 1303 yards and 13 touchdowns but that's not all and unlike his college or high school careers he would also become a, an elite pass catcher in out of the backfield in the nfl he would have 51 catches for 621 yards and three touchdowns having a grand total of 1,924 yards and 19 touchdowns. That's absolutely electric, and not a lot of people in NFL history could do that. His highlight game of his rookie season would be his first game of his professional career, rushing for 153 yards and three touchdowns and a victory over the Rams. He would lead Detroit to a 9-7 record while just barely missing the playoffs. He would also win Offensive Rookie of the Year, be elected to a second-team All-Pro and a Pro Bowl as well. In his second season with the Lions, he would have arguably the best year of his career. At least in my opinion, this is the best rushing year of his career. I believe this is also the best year of his career. Blowing by anyone he wanted to, and to be honest, just making everyone look silly. He would rush 296 times for 1,437 yards and 13 touchdowns. He would become less relevant in the passing game, only having 28 catches for 451 yards and 2 touchdowns, totaling 1,888 yards for 15 touchdowns. While well, yes, he would statistically take a step back, if you could take into effect the fact that he played two less games in the previous year, you could understand why I consider this to be his best season. He would have a career performance in week six of the NFL season versus the Denver Broncos, where he would rush for 185 yards and two touchdowns. He would be elected to another second team all pro, another pro bowl, and finish sixth in offensive player of the year voting. In just his third season in the NFL, his stats wouldn't look nearly as good, but neither did anybody else's because this would be the infamous player lockout season, where they only played pretty much half of a season. 
Either way, he would still have nearly a thousand scrimmage yards and four touchdowns. He would be elected to a Pro Bowl this year, and he would lead Detroit to a playoff game where they would unfortunately lose. In 1983, he would only play 12 games, but would still have 220 carries for 1,040 yards and seven touchdowns. He would also rack up 419 receiving yards to bring his totals up to 1,459 yards, seven touchdowns. In his final career year in 1984, he would play really well, racking up 926 scrimmage yards in the eight games he played. Unfortunately, this is where the sad and tragic ending of Billy Sims would take place. In week eight of the NFL season, he would suffer a catastrophic and career-ending right knee injury. He would attempt to come back in 1988, and nothing would ever come of that. Despite the career-ending injuries and pretty much only playing four full seasons, he would end his career as Detroit's leading rusher in pretty much every category until Barry Sanders would come along just a few years later. Looking at the incredibly sad but brilliant career of Sims, the question I have to ask is, what if? What if he never got injured? What would Barry Sanders be if Sims never left? Unfortunately for us, we'll never know the answers to some of our questions. One thing that is for certain is that if you were to play in the today's NFL, that knee injury more than likely could have been rehabilitated and healed. It's nice to see how far we've come in the medical aspect of everything. And now, if athletes have injuries just like Sims back in the day, they can come back and be just as productive. That doesn't happen a lot, but a few examples are Brady, Bryant, and Durant. The forgotten Billy Sims. I'd like to point out and say, hey, I'm sorry. I know that this is probably the weirdest thing right now. You guys haven't seen one of these. I'm currently undergoing uh, renovations in this room. We're going to be painting and making this look all sorts of pretty and everything else. And for this video, I know it was awfully short. It was about six minutes and 20 seconds of the video itself. And there was a lot of like you hear you hear that a lot in the video. And I'm sorry about that again. Renovations. I have to buy a new desk. This old desk just kind of fell apart on me. So I know that I'm ranting now at this point, but I'm sorry. I do appreciate all your guys' love and support. Thank you all, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.